Hey guys, my name is Shai, and this is going to absolutely be the weirdest video I've ever made. I don't even have my cards out. I don't know if I'm going to pull any. I guess I'll wait and see how I'm feeling <laughs> after I get this out. Basically, I feel very compelled to kind of share some of the very strange and bewildering messages I've been receiving over this full moon in Virgo. <laughs> um, it's not really going to make any sense. I don't really know how to make sense of it, but there's just all these little pieces of information that are coming together and I don't know, it, it comes together to form something. And I guess if this is for you, then, you know, when I start talking about it, it'll start, things will start clicking into place for you. And that's really the point of this to kind of just pass on, um, the energy, pass on the ideas, um, and give you guys the chance to kind of download this information for yourself and make sense of it for yourself. So I guess to start off, you can just feast your eyes upon this <laughs> triangle spiral thing. I bought this before these messages started coming in. It just like grabbed my attention and I ordered it. <laughs> and uh, it's been sitting in the corner of my room and I have just been, I feel like it's been staring at me. And every time I look at it, my like mind starts tingling and there's something about this, this triangle that is essentially being broken up by these spirals. I feel like these spirals are trying to expand the triangle, like flip it, flip it out and make something bigger. So that's one piece of the puzzle. Um, and then uh, I guess the title of this video probably already says something about the keepers of the flame. Who are the keepers of the flame? Um, and what what is going on with them. Essentially, I first came across the ideas of the Keepers of the Flame, I think about a year ago, and that really resonated with me, really struck a chord. I was like, who are they? Who are they? Who are they? What are they? What what do they have to do with me? Like, what what is this? Um, and I've been waiting till now to receive that information. And essentially, I've been down a very long rabbit hole and I was like, ultimately, I, I connected with these 16 beings, these 16 keepers of the flame. And what's very interesting is that my husband actually kind of received or the same information at the same time, because a few days ago, all day I was walking around. I'm like, there's got to be 16 of them. This number 16 is very important. There's 16. 16 like archetypes 16 beings it's it's 16 i was like very <laughs> very stuck on this number 16 and then uh i hadn't mentioned this to my husband at all i was just walking around like mulling it over mulling it over and then i'm staring standing in the kitchen with him just kind of listening to him talk about whatever but i was really pre preoccupied because i was still trying to figure out what is going on with this the 16 keepers of the flame and he just like up and declares we are all descended from 16 beings. And I just, I kind of shat a brick. I just stared at him with my mouth hanging open, like, what the hell did you just say? Because I have been thinking that and trying to figure that out for, for days now. And so massive, massive confirmation. And I remember right before, um, I was about to make this video. I didn't know if I, you know, wanted to do it. And I hear in the next room, uh, he is again talking about the number 16. It was an entirely unrelated thing. He was talking about like math or something, but he kept saying 16, 16. I'm like, okay, okay, I got, I got to make this video because there's something in here for somebody. So essentially all of this information that I'm about to kind of pass on, uh, I received from these 16 keepers of the flame. Um, okay, now to my notes, my <laughs> crazy, crazy notes here. Let me try to explain <laughs> why I wrote this kind of stuff down. It was a whole process. So it started with this thing with 16 because what they were showing me was that, okay, I mean, stuff we already know, right? The universe starts with one and it splits into two and then it splits into four and then eight and then 16 and 32, 64. And that just keeps going and going and going because everything keeps splitting into two, right? That's, I think we all kind of get that binary universe, things divide into two. But simultaneously, I was thinking about the idea of the Trinity, you know, the number three, like the number three is everywhere. 
I'm sure you guys all know all the mystical cool things about the number three. <laughs> um, but I was stuck on this idea that, the, that like a trinity isn't actually three things, it's actually six things because every point of the trinity is two things. Um, you know, like in Hinduism, you got, just to throw one example out there, you know, it's like Brahmin, Vishnu, and Shiva, and every single one of those, you know, gods is part of a, like a twin flame connection, or part of, you know, a pair, you know, it's Shiva and Shakti are one thing. <laughs> so I was like, okay, and I had that confirmed, because as I, as I, like, decided that for myself, I was like, okay, so whenever you have a trinity, it's actually six beings that are, you know, merged into three things. I thought that to myself and was like, yes, that is true for me. And then I look back to some website that I had been on and that is literally the next line that I read. Um, like a trinity is made up of three pairs. I was like, okay, wow, that's the fastest I've ever gotten anything confirmed. Thank you, universe. <laughs> and so that's kind of how this started because then I was thinking, okay, the number three is so important. You know, triangles, threes, <laughs> but then that doesn't fit in with this string of other numbers, you know, 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, and like that doesn't match up with 3, like, right? Like 16, this number 16 is not divisible by 3, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, right? And that was really bothering me, like really, really bothering me. I couldn't put my finger on why that was bothering me so much. And then I was getting these weird messages about triangles. Um, that's why I drew this down. <laughs> I felt like over and over again in many different ways I was sh being shown that I need to be the middle point of the triangle. I need to be the middle point of the triangle. <laughs> like that we need to create the center point of the triangle. And of course that comes back to this, right? That has been like staring at me from the side of my, the side of my room the center of the triangle, the center of the triangle, where this spiral begins. So I didn't know what to make of that, like middle of the triangle, okay. Um, and then I'm sitting there trying to figure out what is this, this like dissonance between the number three and the number four. Because so I was feeling like, you know, numbers that are like these, these, these numbers, right? Two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64, and so on and so forth. Those were important because that's kind of like the tree of the universe, how it goes out. But it doesn't seem, it doesn't go well with the number three. Really bothering me. And then <laughs> I was thinking about, you know, 444, everybody's favorite angel number. Um, that was bothering me because I'm like, it's three fours. Why isn't it four fours? <laughs> Should be a fourth four. And I was thinking about the three pyramids, uh, you know, like the, the three most famous pyramids in Egypt. There's three of them. And I kept hearing, um, it takes four points to make a pyramid. It takes four points to make a pyramid. Um, I mean, I know you can have a pyramid-like structure with three points on the base. Of the bottom is also a triangle and not a square. I don't know if that's still called a pyramid or if that's called something else. But typically when we think of pyramids, right, they have four points and they're a square on the bottom. And they have, you know, four sides and each one is a triangle and then they meet at the top. And somehow this was important to this whole puzzle. It takes four points to make a pyramid. Um, and I was also receiving the message that three, the number three is for growth and four is for stability. So somehow this was all building up to this idea that the number three is somehow like wrong <laughs> or it's not that it's wrong, but it was bothering me. It felt like it was incomplete. I felt like there was something needed to come in. There needed to be four things like four pyramids, four pillars is what I kept hearing. There needs to be four pillars. Um, <laughs> and I started to see why, because you need four points, four pillars, four like things to make a pyramid. And what do you get when you <laughs> like, you know, you have a you make your pyramid out of your square, right? And on the top is the fifth point. You need the four and then that builds us upward to make the fifth, which obviously had me thinking about, you know, 5D, <laughs> but it's like you need like three expands out into four. I, I know this isn't making any sense, but that's like what I tried to draw here. <laughs> it's like you get um, the, if once you make the middle point of the pyramid, it expands and that can spiral out and expand out. The middle point comes outwards. So like just with this, design on this cloth here, if this center point gets spiraled out and like 
comes out here, then this whole pyramid, this whole triangle thing would open up and become a square. And then that would enable it to become, gain a new dimension, essentially. It would be able to gain a new dimension because then this center point would rise up and become the fifth point of the pyramid. So if that's, uh, you know, <laughs> giving anybody any ideas about anything, I guess just roll with that. Um, and then, of course, once you have four pyramids, this is why it's important to get the fourth pyramid. Because then each pyramid becomes a four, becomes one of the four points to make another pyramid. <laughs> so, you know, if you put four pyramids in a square, then you can connect them all. How weird this doesn't write on here very well, but oh well. You know, you connect them all, and now what have you made? You've made a pyramid out of pyramids, and it's stacking up on top of it, uh, on top of itself. <laughs> um, yeah. So I also wrote in here, humanity is the fourth pillar. That's what I kept hearing. Um, okay. So what does that mean? <laughs> it's something to do with like humanity's ascension process is going to enable us to like become this fourth pillar of our universe, allowing the whole universe to expand. When humanity ascends, that opens up the entire universe because we are the fourth pyramid, the fourth pillar, the fourth four in this set of four. Um, and this number four is also connected to these 16 keepers. Um, let me see if I can try to explain that, <laughs> what I'm getting from them. So I probably should have explained this at the beginning, but Linearity is out the window, so I'll just carry on. <laughs> These 16 beings, I mean, it's sort of like there's eight of them, right? Because on the layer of their, like, dissension, before there were 16 of them, there were eight of them, and then they all split in half again and became 16. So they all work in pairs. They all have um, a polar opposite, um, you know? So if we're talking about one of them, right, is like, would be like the North Pole, the other one would be the South Pole. They all operate in these um, axis points. And so not only do they operate in pairs, they are grouped up into two different groups and they're like s spheres. There are, they form two spheres, each with eight points. Kind of like what I drew here, if that gives you a little an idea. And so, there's two separate spheres of them because that in itself forms a north and a south pole, if you will, you know, forms two different points on this axis. And that is allowing them to kind of generate, like generate the dream, generate the simulation, like generate the, I don't even, I don't even know, but it's like, it's allowing, allowing them to hold the space for us to exist in. We kind of exist inside of this energetic field that they are creating. <laughs> That's why there's two, two groups of them and they're inside this big bubble um, that they're kind of creating. That's why they're the keepers of the flame. Um, and every single, from what I understand, every single human is connected to them. They are, you can kind of think of them as our ancestors if, that's hel if that helps. Essentially, every single human soul goes back to them. They are kind of our beginning. Um, we've descended down from them, but it's also a little bit misleading, I think, to think, to use the ancestor analogy, because that makes it feel like they are separate from us. Like, you know, just like you think that your grandparents aren't really, you don't think that your grandparents are you, right? They're your grandparents. They're different. You've just inherited some of their DNA. But with these keepers, they're like literally our meta archetypes and they are literally us. They are essentially the human oversouls. You know, consciousness goes up, up beyond they are, but they're like, a really important benchmark for where like our consciousness is kind of held. <laughs> so they are literally us, but all human souls essentially ascend up into that point on our like soul tree. We're all descended from these 16. And I think, so we're all, we are all descended from them, but some of us are kind of more closely connect connected to them than others, um, which it's kind of hard to make sense of that, right? I think what it is, the metaphor I keep seeing is that kind of most people have descended from them, but they've kind of, 
been around and like their soul has been on a very like egalitarian or like eclectic journey of mixing with this type of consciousness and mixing with this type of consciousness and doing that and it's come down and kind of gotten so mixed around that their connection to these 16 keepers it's kind of like the equivalent of they're connected to them through a like dial up internet they, they're like accessing <laughs> their oversouls with dial up internet like you know ba back in the 20th century internet that's how like weak the connection has become just because they've done other things and it's not like this is bad it's just that's kind of the side effect of that kind of soul journey some of us are we kind of have like a fiber line to these guys we have a very strong internet connection to them because we've like we haven't done as much essentially we've just kind of come straight down and pulled their conscious like pulled our own consciousness down with us and we still have a strong connection to them because we haven't kind of mixed our consciousness around we've kind of stayed more like aligned with that level of our oversoul if that makes sense <laughs> um so what was i trying to say i guess it doesn't matter at this point i'll just keep forging ahead um, so I wrote on here, you're probably wondering, dreamers, architects, engineers, and workers, w like, what is that about? So I feel like what they showed me is that, so they work in pairs and then, but then there's, they also work in groups of four. Four of them are the dreamers. They're the kind of group that held the vision, that imagined all of this. They kind of dreamt the idea of humanity into existence and they were like, okay, we got the idea, but who's going to like, um, how are we going to pull this off? How are we going to pull this off? So, you know, they went to the architects, another group of four, and they were like, hey, like we, we can start like structuring the universe. We can figure out how to do this. We, we got this down, but they were like, okay, you know, we still need people who can do more specific engineering, more specific technical stuff. We need people to go farther down, like into the universe, into the game to really engineer this. So that's the engineers. And the fourth group that they showed me i wrote down workers but that's not really what i mean i wanted to call them the livers <laughs> the livers <laughs> but that, that obviously sounds weird but this group they are like the people who are really meant to live and to be embodied and to like exist and to thrive and to sense and to like exist in the sensory world and to just really be humanity essentially we could all just call them humanity but this is this is even what they're like on the level of this oversoul level of these 16 keepers um and that's what's going on with the missing pillar or the missing pyramid the missing group of four it's these guys these workers um i just have this feeling that the 16 keepers were kind of floating around and they have a city it's the emerald city and when i see it it is in a green, green, vast, vast green field. And in the middle of this vast green field, it's like a stone city. Um, it kind of looks like old ruins and there's like pyramids and sphinxes and, you know, big coliseums and everything from ancient history. Those archetypes, those templates are all there. It's like a template, like holding place. And I have only begun to explore the Emerald City, but there's like portals and there's healing wells and all kinds of stuff it's like all there that is where everything to do with humanity came from it all was dreamt up and placed there but i feel like they wanted this to become physical you know they like when, when i see them they're they almost look like they're made of stone actually but but like they're not physical it's it's like they dreamt themselves up and they dreamt themselves a body and it looks you know what we would consider like a face made out of stone and they're huge and you know but they're non-physical and i feel like they wanted to experience physicality they're like how could we make this even awesome you know we dreamt ourselves up this place how can we make this more awesome how can we make it more of a lived experience how can we experience more senses in order to do that they had to become physical <laughs> like <laughs> and it turns out that becoming physical manifesting physical bodies is incredibly difficult and that has been the entire project here <laughs> you know they had to go all the way down like into like you know 1d right 1d consciousness of like making rocks physical rocks and then build it back up all the way from there that is how they had to build 
our physical reality. And so phys physicality exists all the way out here, but they want it to come all the way up to where they are. They want to be able to be physical in, you know, the place that I'm going to call the Emerald City. They want to be able to be physical there. And I think that will happen <laughs> once humanity gets its shit together and ascends, essentially, once humanity wakes up and owns its power and remembers that they are the fourth pillar then and you know and then we have all everything will fall into place everything will have this extra four this fourth four in all of the ways that you can imagine it and then ta-da <laughs> then it's like this this massive uh, completely insane project that has like an inconceivable amount of layers will be complete because we will have come all the way out here, invented <laughs> physicality, and then ascended with our physicality up there so that now we can experience all of the benefits, not just of 5D, but all of the benefits of our entire universe. We'll be able to experience the entire universal matrix. Like if there's 12 dimensions, then it's all 12. If there's more dimensions than that, like, I don't know, right? All of it will be able to experience freedom to travel and experience and own the whole universe, but we will be able to simultaneously maintain our physicality if we so choose to manifest physical bodies and then leave them like with complete freedom. Okay. <laughs> um, I feel like the bubble of hot energy that had been compelling me to share this um, was just deflated. So I think I got all of the information out. I will let you guys look one last time at this cool triangle. <laughs> Cause this looks like just staring at this makes my brain like buzz. Um, yeah, I don't think I'm going to pull any cards. I think that was all I needed to share for today. So if you listened to this far, thank you so much. I hope you guys enjoyed the energetic transmission and just sending you so much love and light. Bye.